uh, yeah, yeah, you you also play again a very critical role in getting clients on yep. board, right? So, uh, tell us about the shift that's happening, you know, in 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 the year 2020, and how is it going to happen? That how are people's mindset uh, mindsets changing towards security, and where do you think it's going to be? The biggest change that has happened is uh, people have understood that not everything can be put behind closed doors. Uh, I have had discussions with prospects who said that I can't give you remote access. This has to be done on-prem. My solution has to only run on-prem. I, I can't because this is a very critical piece of equipment for me. I cannot let anybody from the external world have access to it. People have realized this, that uh, the business itself, forget about security, the businesses itself have understood that we can't function unless we don't let people from the external world have access internally which has made our job a little more easier uh, earlier we you had we had to tell people we had to make them understand that it is a hard sell a really hard sell exactly uh, we would have to talk about so any organization for them to function uh, to deliver their business or to continue working making sure that they are profitable you can't do everything internally. You would always have external players. But then those external players would make very small percentage of your total workforce. Yeah. And people at times conveniently ignored it saying that, you know what, anyways, I've got a third party user. There's a contract there. There's a non-disclosure agreement there. I would let them come in via VPN. When COVID happened and you had organizations letting up to 60 to 70% of their employees come in remotely, uh, via a mean which was only sized to host maybe three to five percent of total workforce they realized that you know what this has to be fixed yeah. even before security we need to make sure that there's a clear communication path through which my user can come in which has reinforced their understanding that security now is even more important when i would have people connect locally work locally i was paying 10% attention to security now that i'm going to let majority of my users connect remotely and there was no choice to be made, right? This was, was no brain. Exactly. People, sure. anybody who said, I can't let things run remotely, had to shut down. Yeah. And when you're shutting yourself down, it's literally killing your business. You're giving the opportunity to your competitors to come out and, and get your market share. So in that term, uh, there has been a shift. People now understand that uh, remote solution that can work remotely, solution that can be deployed remotely. Even in terms of our, our meetings, there used to be customers who would be very reluctant in having people on site. Yeah. Dynamics of how business would work, right? You would be more comfortable seeing people in front of you, face to face, see their body language, be comfortable that these are the right sort of people that I'm working with. Now they've understood that there has to be a different way I could judge, I could analyze a vendor. Uh, I may not always get to see the vendor face to face. Of course, and I could. You don't need to as well. I mean, with the way that exactly. things have evolved right yeah. now. Right. Now, tell us about a case where you implemented your solutions and how it saved or helped a client of yours. Again, uh, one interesting thing that I tell my folks is that if somebody tells you, what do you do? Uh, so even in the organization, right? So every time we hire a new individual, we have our own internal, uh, what's the word for it? We have got our orientation, orientation uh, program where to let that individual know that of course that you'd be working in this specific function for the organization. The organization overall does these many things. And you should be familiar that what does this function do? What does that function do? So once uh, within our, our function, our pre-sales function, we had this one chat and I asked people that, okay, if somebody, forget about somebody, if your father walked up to you and asked you, what do you do for a living? What would your answer be? And nobody had an answer. So I told them that when you go back today, go and tell your folks that you saved the world from a cyber threat one project at a time. Yeah. So that's that's what I do. Now, what do I exactly do? What do I do behind that? Is something which can be uh, spoken about for us. But at a high level, what do I do? I make the world a better place, one project at a time. So what we are doing here is we're making uh, organizations more resilient in their cybersecurity posture by deploying our solution. Few of the key uh, projects that I have been involved in. Uh, uh, I don't remember which year was this when this breach had happened. Uh, there was this biggest uh, cyber incident where this oil and gas company had to shut down some 25,000 on devices. Uh, Aramco? Yes, Aramco, Saudi Aramco, exactly. 
and uh, so the problem was that the oil was being produced at thousands of bar barrels a minute but then there was no system to capture those logs and for Aramco to shut down its operations would have caused <laughs> insane absolutely true. we have worked with uh, oil and gas companies and we understand how important is it for me to make sure that the administrators are secure these accesses are secure so every time when we work with an oil and gas company I remind my folks or I remind myself that you know what this could prevent an Aramco from happening again when I'm working you would have heard about the swift breaches that have happened for banks so that breach would have happened for one bank but every bank in every corner of the world is 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 could be a victim of that same thing happening to them so when we work with a bank we are making sure that their swift servers are secured which would then prevent them from being a victim of a swift attack when we work with government entities government entities would re regularly have infiltrators trying to bring their services down it becomes more of a reputational attack than a monetary attack they want to just highlight that you know what this country is something you should stay away from because they can't even have their uh, servers up and running so every government organization that we work with we understand and this is what we have in our minds that this is what we are saving them against so there have been cases where we have worked with some customers who would have had a recent breach and now we are trying to help them to fix uh, any further breaches from happening for every customer who buys a cyber security solution they would have two stories to tell one is they're trying to fix the cyber security posture as a good thing to do or they've had a recent breach yeah, and that's when they realize exactly that's and that's when they realize that you know what something needs to be done Arcon has been fortunate enough uh, to that every customer that we have worked with has never had a breach so far that's excellent that's exactly and we've also worked with customers in in fixing the breaches that have happened for them to make sure that it doesn't happen again damage control absolutely for a layman yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay okay uh, now do the products and services of Arcon um, cater to clients across countries uh, or do they differ from country to country because of cultural differences or you know whatever so while we call up while we call ourselves a product company we're not really selling products we're selling solutions and this solution has to be stitched in a way that the customer needs uh, in the cyber security space you would see vendors who would sell boxes i would have a so that that the, that segment of the industry requires a box to be sold mm -hmm. people don't want to put a, a, a big procurement cycle around it they have a requirement when you buy an antivirus you don't spend a lot of time you just simply go out and say i want an antivirus and you get the antivirus deployed it comes with some initial set of policies and you deploy it when you want a firewall you want an appliance based solution you want a box but when you want something like a privileged access management solution you first have to understand that how operations are being done a privileged access management solution is not something which is going to sit in the background and monitor no it's going to be part of your daily activities that you perform it's going to be part of your daily operations that's why and this is something which i've learned from anil a privileged access management solution 8 out of 10 times should be looked upon as an operation solution than a security solution why because people log into your pam solution everything for them to do is going to happen through your pam solution it has to go through a cycle of solutioning we need to understand the dynamics of the business or the the operations of an organization that we are proposing our solution to how many internal users do they have what kind of devices do they have is everything put in a single place or do they've got devices running in different geographies mm -hmm. and now with more and more countries understanding the importance of data privacy data regulation and new regulatory requirements being brought in so you may you may be working with one organization which has got presence in different geographies every geography is going to have a different requirement mm -hmm. and you need to make sure that your solution is able to cater that cater to that requirement mm -hmm. uh, it could be this one organization same set of employees same set of devices but because hosted in different geographies now your solution has to be uh, stitched in a way so that it it meets those compliance requirements it meets those regulatory requirements so yeah uh, it need not be a customer from a different geography it could be the same customer and i would have to uh, solutionize exactly differently exactly so it's more solution and so culture geographies don't really matter 
it does matter uh, and that's why it has to go Sorry, through a, yeah. yeah it has to go through a cycle of solutioning sure. um, i could be working with a bank in india which is a nationalized bank which doesn't have anything outside the country yeah. for them uh, because currently we don't in india we don't have any model where maharashtra implements a different data regulation right. policy than gujarat so for me it could still be the same solution working in all all regions of the country but for a global bank which has got presence in let's say europe presence in north america when i am working with them i need to make sure that my solution can now address their needs specific to their regions though it's the same customer of course it's a, if it's a customer based out of europe based out of north america of course they will have their own set of requirements but even and because we work with a lot of global customers um one customer in itself would have multiple requirements depending upon geographies and even business so even the business functions uh you've got finance right. like for example banks you've got core banking systems and then you've got swift now swift has its own set of requirements i can't just give the give a box to a customer and say that this is going to address all your needs can't work that way exactly so swift has to be looked at as a as a different animal altogether and there has to be a solution uh, proposed around it which has to be in line with how things are being currently done this is one important thing a lot of time cyber security solution implementation creates uh, though i would not want to use the word mess but it creates a mess why you would see a lot of friction from mm. employees uh, nobody likes to have a big brother watching them over their shoulder so there would be a lot of friction so our as, and as i said uh, about arcon what is it that stands out for arcon compared to the competition i said simplicity when we go into a, a project of course what we are doing is going to save organizations from a lot of bad things and we understand the importance but we don't put the burden of managing this or running this on their employees we want to make sure that whatever they are doing they are still able to do this we don't want to bring in a lot of changes because for any organization to a implement a cyber security solution is going to bring some change if i'm going to further increase that change for the users users would want to have my solution thrown out of the out of the company on the very first day so to make sure that users are able to adopt i are are using it a lot of times you see cyber security solutions being implemented but not being used which then would affect your renewals because the cfo would then say how many users logged into this where is the the access report and you see no people nobody has accessed it so it's important that you get the deployment right it's important that you have the adoption right that people are using it and uh, that would ensure that the customer stays with you now how has the pandemic impacted uh, the services you provide how did it impact you guys uh, impact okay so when i when i look at the word impact i look at it in a in a negative sense but i think impact is also the right word we had to go back to our drawing board and 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 figure out uh um, we at times would work on project with a lot of reservations we'd say for this to happen we have to do this in a so it wasn't just the the receiver of the services who had to relook at how they receive these services even the 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 service provider had to look at how would i be able to provide the service in the best possible way i cannot let the quality i cannot let the uh the delivery times to get affected just because i'm working remotely So we did a lot of uh, we did a lot of things um we made sure that our employees we ourselves had to implement some process and uh, processes internally we had to make sure that people were available around the clock when you when you work out of a, a physical location you can make sure that everybody is available but then when you're relying on people to work remotely you can't tell that whether yahya has a very good internet connection at his home or not and what if yahya does not i cannot let my customer suffer because yahya's uh yeah yeah is not getting good connectivity speed so how do i make sure that my users are able to connect with the consumers uh, with my customers and deliver so we did a lot of, uh, we did a lot of things uh people took up the responsibility uh and it it need so of course at at the leadership level we had to take some decisions which were then propagated into certain functions and each function had to work in a different way so while the product and development does not have to interact with the customers a lot so they could work in an isolated way mm-hmm. but for teams and functions which uh, constantly engage with customers they had to make sure that they had all the backups in place 
gifts if somebody was not available people uh, had people knew who to reach out to uh, mm. people had to make sure that they were available some key people in every function had to make sure that they were available around the clock yeah so what you're trying to say is that uh, not only had your solutions changed yeah. uh, for your customers but even your internal absolutely uh, things went through yes so see uh, i would still say that in terms of solution the change that we brought in was a because the customers were never looking for a remote solution and now with covid now with lockdowns they were looking for a remote solution we quickly went back and said that you know what my solution can now also work remotely for you you don't have to have you don't have to first bring your users in and then make them use the application your users can access the application from anywhere the application always had the ability it's just that people never asked for it so sure. so over there we were we were to a certain extent we were covered but for our internal operations for for a product company for a solution vendor uh, operations services play an important role while i have to make sure that my product works my solution works i have to also make sure that if it doesn't work i have my support system in place and especially for a solution which is a key solution in terms of all the administration that a customer can do happens through your solution yeah. it becomes even more important for you to make sure that the solution is available and the people supporting the solution are also available so uh going forward where do you think the cyber security industry is heading let's say in a five year span um with all the advancements so i think cyber security is directly proportional to the way uh technology grows yeah the more the technology grows the more reachable technology becomes the more reachable cyber security would have to be um uh, mid 2000s uh, 2010 uh your uh, uncles and aunts would not know much about cyber security the concept was alien. exactly now with mobile phones now with transactions being done online and this is just cyber security right? this is not privilege uh, i still remember that i had never cared about the security of my passwords yeah. because people were not breaking into your bank accounts as frequently true but now you think now when you hear about these uh, apple cloud breaches that happen and which would then open up a complete pandora's box that somebody's got all their pictures why would somebody want to break into my uh, my cloud oh because they want my personal information so maybe my password i, I would be pretty sure that even if you would have asked a cyber security guy about how many passwords do you remember they would have just one password that they've used for their everywhere. yeah everywhere exactly so uh, as technology grows um, so we, now you're going to have smart homes you're going to have smart cars you've got smartphones yeah. every connected exactly sure. which opens up new opportunities for uh, you know imposters for breachers to try and break things and cyber security would have to make sure that wherever technology goes it's able to so the way technology is growing cyber security would have to grow and it has been growing that way adoption still remains a challenge uh, you may have all the best of solutions available and people if people are reluctant to change you think even now with remote working adoption would still be a challenge see even today uh, even organizations so security is not just one product one solution to be deployed it's, a, it's a, in fact if you'd look at the cyber security space you would have how many thousands of vendors each vendor bringing in a different technology altogether i have been in the information security space for how many almost 9 years now every uh, every conference that we attend i see a new vendor there who's taken up one problem statement and put a solution around it this was a problem statement which existed nobody paid attention to there were people who were exploiting this problem people didn't pay much attention to and then you've got this one massive breach that has happened and people have become uh, aware exactly so it's not that it's always reluctance to change at at times you've not even paid attention you have not even had that valuation evaluation done that what are the things that could go wrong that are related to the security posture of me as an individual me as a group of people working for the organization or the entire organization so so yeah cyber security is going to grow you would see a lot of automation i think automation uh, is going to be it automation behavior analysis machine learning you want security to be uh, intelligent you don't want somebody to sit and create policies 
you want the way when I log into Google from anywhere, the moment I log in from a new device, Google doesn't wait for some for me to go back and change the password. It, yeah. it has the intelligence that Yahya all of a sudden logs in from a new IP. Is that Yahya? I would want. And this is what users love. Nobody would say to a Google sending you a notification that was it you logging in. Yeah. But if Google tells you that you first have to go and create a policy yeah. that I would only be logging in from these three IPs, people would not even know what an IP is. Yeah. So your 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 security would have to be a step ahead. True. And make people aware that did, did you know this happened? Was it you? And people would love it. And and that's how every solution is being shaped these days. Uh, you want to have that. It has to be intuitive. It has to be. Uh, it has to. Yeah, it has to be intuitive. Yeah.